Greetings, friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. Is there a gay gene? Are homosexuals born that way? Can they change? Well, what's the Bible teach? And actually, what does science teach us about these types of things? I'd like to start off by reading something put out by the United States government. In humans, each cell normally contains 23 pairs of chromosomes for a total of 46. 22 of these pairs, called autosomes, look the same in both males and females. The 23rd pair, the sex chromosomes, differ between males and females. Females have two copies of the X chromosome, while males have one X and one Y chromosome. So we see there's a chromosomal difference between males and females. But what about a tendency to be homosexual or something that makes you become homosexual? Well, in August of 2019, the largest study ever done on this particular subject was published in the journal Science. And I'd like to read something that Harvard Magazine reported about it. There is no one gene for being gay. That's the conclusion of a paper by an international team of researchers led by Benjamin Neal of the Broad Institute of Harvard and MIT, published in the journal Science. The team combed the genomes of more than 470,000 people in the United States and United Kingdom to see how genetic variants at millions of different places in the same genome correlate with whether participants ever had sex with somebody of the same sex. The study, by far the largest such investigation of sexuality to date, uh, was done by combining information from a couple different sources, and they said that maybe 8% or 25% there's some kind of an influence. But let me further go back into this and read something else one of the lead researchers said. It is effectively impossible to predict an individual's sexual behavior from their genome said Neil, the director of genetics in the Stanley Center for Psychiatric Research at Broad and associate professor in medicine at Harvard Medical School. So according to this researcher, it's not possible that you can look at the genes and say someone's going to be homosexual, which says, of course, they're really not born that way. Now, the BBC also reported about this, and I'd like to read something that it reported from a leader over in the UK. David Curtis, honorary professor at the UCL Genetics Institute, University College London, said, the study clearly shows there's no such thing as a gay gene. There is no genetic variant in the population which has any substantial effect on sexual orientation. And the BBC, by the way, also said that all these factors together only accounted for under 1% of same-sex behavior. Under 1%, so that kind of makes it sound like, you know, you're really not born that way. Now, I think in time, the LGBTQ people aren't going to use this as much. Kind of reminds me of what the abortion people used to do when they tried to get abortions legalized. First, they would say, well, it's not really a human. It doesn't really look like a human until after so, such a period of time. So abortion, the first or second trimester, used to be the first, kind of. Uh, is okay. Well, now, of course, they admit that they're killing a human being because biologists realize that life is conception, at least most of them do, human life. And so they don't seem to care that they're killing. And now it's just all about equal rights or women's reproductive rights, whatever they're going to call it. And I think that's the same thing that's going to happen eventually with LGBTQ people. They use this born this way thing in order to get laws change and get certain types of sympathy, but the reality is they're really not born this way. Homosexuality and other forms of sexual morality are sinful, and people don't want to hear that. It's not good for the homosexual. There's all kinds of health issues associated with this as well. As far as being sinful, I'd like to read something Apostle Paul wrote, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 from the New King James Version. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Of course, the LGBTQ crowd doesn't want to be accused of sin, so they want to say that they don't really have a choice. This might be why uh, the presidential uh, hopeful Pete Buttigieg said, I can tell you if me being gay was a choice, it was a choice that was made far, far above my pay grade. And if you have a problem with who I am, your problem is not with me. Your quarrel, sir, is with my creator. So he's basically claiming that his homosexuality was built into him by God. And he had no choice. But that's simply not true. It's not a new concept 
to say that they're not born this way, but they've been saying this for quite a few decades, many of them. Well, anyway, back in 1984, in the July-August edition of the old Plain Truth magazine, there was an article, and I'd like to read something about it, and the title was, Is it true some are born that way? There's a reason why many homosexuals assume they were born that way, why they assume their sexual attractions and emotions are as natural to them as the color of their eyes. Genetics and hormones play a part in developing human sexuality, but not in the way many think. And individual responses to cultural, parental, and personal experiences play a very big part in molding human sexual feelings. Humans are born with sexual emotional capacity. If wrong and damaging emotional and sexual feelings take root in human minds, it's because the humans uh, allow and do not resist them. Perhaps they didn't realize they should. Perhaps they chose not to resist when they could. Perhaps certain temperamental or emotional weaknesses may make some more vulnerable to certain sexual temptations than others. Some wrong experiences leave different impressions. Other misleading emotions, feelings, and desires repeated enough become deeply learned and conditioned in the human mind. Habits are at first like cobwebs and cables, goes an old Spanish proverb. Satan well understands this deep conditioning in human minds and emotions. Yet he works to thwart God's purpose through them. So yes, Satan realizes that people can be tempted. We see back in the Garden of Eden, uh, Satan uh, tempted uh, Eve, and sh she fell for it. So all temptations are not, are not sexual. Now I want to get back to the article in the Old Plain Truth magazine. Let me read a few more things from it. Many unfortunate human sexual and emotional feelings exist, some too obscene to describe. All these warn us of the great varieties of sexual and emotional conditioning that can happen to improperly controlled minds and lives. The majority of males in most cultures are heterosexually oriented. But even heterosexuals allow their minds and sexual feelings to be diverted by wrong desires. Some homosexuals develop a degree, so excuse me, some heterosexuals develop a degree of homosexual interest, a degree in bisexuality. Heterosexual males with effeminate female mannerisms also exist. Feminine heterosexual females are again in the majority. But there are also masculine mannered females. Female homosexuals, lesbians, are often typically feminine in outward appearance and manner. Others are very mannish. Human sexuality is more than one's gender or sexual act. It's not just a private matter as so many want others to believe. Human sexuality is a total way of thinking and acting and feeling. One's sexuality affects the way one responds to his or her own and the opposite sex, to marriage, to the family experience, and to every aspect of life. That's why sex has so much impact on human lives and culture. It's the reason why the Creator commands men and women to develop it rightly. And that is what this word says, is to do it correctly. Now, I'd like to read something else the Apostle Paul wrote. This is from 1 Corinthians 6, and I'm going to start in verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of our God. So Paul says, look, yes, people had problems with all kinds of sexual sins, but you can change and be washed through Jesus. Now, I'd like to read something from the NIV translation. Uh, this is from the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 3, starting in verse 5, and this is also from the Apostle Paul. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is a idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now you must rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to one another since you have taken off your old self with its practices and to put on a new self which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Also, the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This includes all LGBTQ-related sins as well. Yes, people can change. And I'd like to read a report from uh, Peter Sprigg. 
In evidence shows sexual orientation can change debunking the myth of immutability, immutability. I report on academic studies over the last two decades based on four large data sets drawn from surveys about sexuality. These studies are both population-based and longitudinal. The truth is sexual orientation is a multifaceted concept involving a combination of attractions, behaviors, and personal identity. These four studies all demonstrate that significant change in each of the elements of sexual orientation is possible. So don't have, allow people to tell you, no, you can't change it, and science says you can't change it, and that's simply not the case. I'd also like to read something from a report from a couple of years ago. A biological male can take hormones, surgically alter his body, and identify as female, but the procedure still won't make him a woman, according to new evidence found by Israeli researchers. That's because there's at least 6,500 genes that contain sex-specific instructions for males and females. So there's major differences, and there's not genes that turn you into a homosexual, but there are those that are for your, your sex, the sex that you were born with. Now, I'd like to also read something else as well. Scientists who did brain scans of 118 fetuses in the second half of pregnancy to analyze the link between gender and connectivity of the developing brain believe differences are biological. According to the U.S. study published in the journal Developmental Cognitive Neuroscience, female brains growing in the uterus produce long-range uh, networks. Professor Tom Thomason said this was less true of boys who were more susceptible to environmental influences. Now the reason I mention this particular one is this is done before people are even born. So in utero. So sometimes people say, oh no, all the sexual stuff all has to do with your environment and how you were changed or raised or not raised when you're growing up. And while that does have a, a factor, the reality is there are physical and differences in, even in the brain before that you're born. So it's basically a false narrative that gender is not determined. <laughs> it is. You've got the 6,500 hormones. You've got the chromosomal difference that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, and as far as things such as cross-dressing goes, I'll also comment that's uh, condemned by the Bible. I'm going to read from the Old Testament this time. This is from Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man, nor shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all who do so are an abomination to the Lord. So we see the Bible clearly condemns uh, cross-dressing, and obviously cross-dressing is a voluntary behavior that people can change if they really want to. Well, the Bible makes it clear that men and women are different. The Bible is also clear that sexual immorality uh, is wrong, but people who are involved in it can change. The Bible warns about those who suppress the truth and unrighteousness in Romans 1, verse 18. The truth is still the truth. According to science, there is no uh, gay gene. Uh, homosexuality is a choice, and a choice the Bible says people should repent of if they've made that choice, because through Christ Jesus, all can be cleansed. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel.